feel you cannot master no martial arts. Okay. Um, it'll take years on years, but you can be great at the things that you have, and that could take little to no time. Some people got it, some people don't. It's, being, it's, it's about training and working on all your flaws until it becomes second nature, basically. Wow. Until you can just go in there and your body does it the correct way. Right. You know, you, if you're training and you do it a million times and you're bringing that hand back to your chin and never to your chest and you keep your chin down and you're doing it every day when you go fight, you should do it the same way. Hello everyone, this is another episode of Let's Talk Sports with Tim McCain and I'm here with Elias Loco Briley. Uh, you know, he's an amateur MMA champion, several championships yes, he's won sir. so yes, far. Sir. So, uh, but let's get this interview started, man. So, uh, Elias, you know, we've been talking a little bit and uh, I want to I wanna know, when did your passion for the game begin? Um, um, I've been a martial arts fan my whole life. Uh, my dad was a big fight fan, so uh, it kind of just went right over into it. Um, I probably started doing it. I was eight years old. I started with Taekwondo. Um, I got my first real fight. I was 13 years old um, with Thai, Muay Thai. So I've been loving it my whole life, been doing it for about 10 years now. I feel you. I feel you. So um, I have a question. What made you decide to choose um, MMA over like kickboxing? Um, all right. So how it started, um, it's, a, it's a weird story, kind of. My dad, I, I wanted to, at first, I wanted to start with boxing. I knew I wanted to do MMA, but I just wanted to do boxing because I didn't know the different types of martial arts. Um, I went to a gym, um, and I seen a guy throwing some crazy head kicks, end up being uh, Eddie Showtime Walker, a, a good friend of mine, but throwing some crazy head kicks on the bag, and the bag was jumping, and I'm just like, yo, like, what is he doing? And then they explained what Muay Thai was to me, and they just told me that Muay Thai would teach you how to box, kick, and throw your elbows and the knees. So that's the difference between kickboxing and Muay Thai. And then when I when I seen that, I was just like, hey man, let's let's sign up for that. And I just went straight into Muay Thai. So um, I really just just wanted to be take the best striking okay. striking thing that there was, and it seemed like Muay Thai was that, and that's how I started. Wow. Okay. Okay. So um, what kind of fighters did you watch that you emulated as a child? Who were some of those guys? In that's, any a sport, good, that's a good any question. See, man, I watch, I watch everything, and um, you know, you, of course, you had your Floyd Mayweather's, you had, you had your, at that time, you had your Randy Couture's, your Chuck Liddell's, your Vandalay Silva, you had your Pride, you had your UFC's. So um, my style is mixed with a little bit of everybody. Um, I would say my, my favorite would be George St. Pierre. Um, wow. I felt like even if a guy was better than him, he was good at finding a way to win, and he was a real, real winner and sort of like myself. So I say George St. Pierre mixed with a lot of guys. I feel you, I feel you. So what was the first experience like when you won your first belt? Um, What's the first thought that came to mind? I might be kind of good. I might, I might can actually do this. Um, I won my first belt, I was like 14 years old. So it was, it was a, a long wow. time ago um, in an amateur kickboxing tournament. Um, I won Paul Murphy's Boxing Academy belt, the WKA, World Kickboxing Association belt, a few times. Uh, then went on to uh, grappling, tried out for the, the Naga, I won the Naga's belt. Um, so man, I've been, I've been collecting belts for a minute, but not the belt that I want, so I'm still going. What belt is that one? Um, anything, um, anything on those higher levels in, inside the professional league. So I know I'll grab a belt before I get to the UFCs and the Bellators and the ones and but I definitely want one of those belts for sure. And I will get it. And you fight right now at 145. 145, correct? yes sir. I fought at 45 and 55. Uh, I feel good at 55, faster at 55, stronger at 45. 45 is just a better weight for me. 45. Would you go? How? What's the farthest weight would you go? Would you go around 60, 65, or is 145, 155 where you want to stay? If it if it makes sense, I do it. If it makes sense, I do it. So we were talking off camera about like business, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, just where did that business mindset come from in the beginning? When it comes to like owning your own ownership, you know, we we're talking about cryptocurrency. Where did that begin? Um, in this sport, you have to think outside of just fighting. You know, because um, fighting it could be today and gone tomorrow. It could be injuries. It could be anything. To it's about longevity, and it is about 
being able to keep it going, but anything can happen in this sport. So, you know, I do a lot of thinking outside of outside of what I would, I would like to open up many gyms, many little things like coin laundries and anything that brings residual income. It's just something you want to think about as a fighter. I feel you. See, you got the brand right now. Got the logo. Yeah. Show, show the people yeah, real yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we, we're having a, I like to give thanks to Hashtag Work, the, uh, the I Am Brothers, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of guys that's um, with me on this Team Loco train, so, and they're just, they're just one of the many. I feel you, I feel you. So what inspires you the most when it comes to your fight game? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, I'm inspired by, by many things, but the one thing that inspires me the most is to to just prove the doubters wrong and, and the people that believe me right. That that motivates me daily. Um, you know, I'm 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 I gotta refuse to be a statistic, and that that motivates me. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm from the the rougher side of Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, you know I wasn't supposed to be the champion of the world. It wasn't set up for me to be the greatest in the world. So that motivates me daily to make sure that I am. Understood. Understood. So as an athlete, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You have a lot of young people look up to you. Yes, sir. Look up, look up to athletes in general. Yes, sir. Do you feel like as an athlete, it is your responsibility to um, be a role model to young people who look up to you? Um, definitely, definitely. Um, there's a lot of people that, and, and with the sport that I chose, also were looked at as you know savages and and, and things of those natures. So it's it's. It's important, yes, it's very important for, for me to uh, carry myself as, as a businessman also and not just, when I'm in there though, I do, I do, do let go work. Yeah, no, I'm letting the savage out for sure, but it's very important for me to be a professional also. I got you, understood. So I have a, a, few, a few other questions yeah. like, um, so a lot, of the experts, a lot of the experts, they consider you to be a well-rounded fighter. Yes, sir. Would you rather be on the ground or would you rather, what's the stand, is it stand up game or is it the ground game? Wh which one do you like the most? Okay, uh, nothing is better than knocking somebody out. I feel you. All right, nothing, that's what the fans wanna see, that's what I wanna give, nothing is better than, than, than knocking somebody out. But uh, a finish is a finish, I okay. abandon nothing. Um, if I can get the choke or, or get the arm or the leg before the knockout, that's what I'm gonna get. My job is to, 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 to prove that my martial arts is better than theirs, and it's, and it's not even close. My job is to go in there and finish everybody I fight. And either that or it's going to be me working towards it, for I feel sure. You, I feel so. You. so I do know that you recently had a, um, a canceled fight. It's going to mm -hmm. be happening September 28th. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what are your, some of your predictions for the fight? What, do, what, do you, what would you say to your opponent? What would you like to say to your opponent? Um, I'm number one. I'm number one, and, and it's been a long, uh, two years ago, they didn't believe it when I was saying it. Now a lot of people are, are you know, trying to see, and they, they, now a lot of people do believe it, some will argue it. Um, I'm number one, so for my opponent, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't even want to speak on him, because he could be replaced, and they could be a whole other person. Uh, he can get injured. I do have faith in him. Um, yeah. I do believe he'll come to fight, but I am going to be ready everywhere. If he can strike better than me, if he can box better than me, has to kick better than me, if he can kick better than me, has to wrestle better than me, if he wrestles better than me, has to do jits better than me, uh, and I am, I am dangerous everywhere. So I'm just coming in there and I'm going to fight smart, fight hard, hands up, chin down, and, and, and go to war. Man, that's respect. We're talking Thank to you, Elias, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you Thank so you. much. Appreciate it. Thank you.